A few months ago, Emacs released the Babyhawk 2 HD, which is compatible with the DJI FPV system. I had been wanting Emacs to enter the digital FPV space for a while now, and with the Babyhawk 2 HD, they did not disappoint. It's been my go-to drone for cruising around, going through tiny gaps, as well as some freestyle flying. It's been a lot of fun. However, I couldn't help thinking about my analog FPV friends who were feeling a little left out. They should be able to join in the fun too. And now they can. This is the Babyhawk 2 Analog Edition. Careful, Chris, it's heavy. This feels suspiciously lightweight. I'm wondering if Kelly just gave me an empty box and kept the quad for himself. But that doesn't sound like Kelly. He wouldn't actually do that. Let's see what's in the box. Looks like we've got stickers, QR codes for the manuals, the Baby Hawk 2, a total of six propellers, three of each direction, and an assortment of hardware. The Emacs Eco 1404 3700 kV motors run on up to a 4S battery. Emacs's all-in-one F4 board comes with Betaflight 4.2.5 and BL Heli S ESC firmware. The 3.5 inch Avon Scimitar T-mount props have a 2.8 inch pitch. The Runcam Racer 5 FPV camera paired with the TBS Unify Pro 32 Nano provide a vivid image and reliable transmission for a great flying experience. The all-up weight is about 221 grams with the recommended 850 mAh 4S battery and 121 grams without the battery. I chose the version with the FR Sky D8 receiver. The pre-flight setup was quite minimal. To bind it, I put my controller in bind mode and held down the bind button on the receiver while plugging in a 4S battery. Then I connected it to my laptop via the easy to access micro USB port on the Babyhawk 2. In Betaflight, I calibrated the accelerometer. Next, in the configuration tab, I turned off permanent air mode, since I will be setting up air mode on a switch. Don't forget to hit save after each step. In the receiver tab, I noticed that my stick inputs were not working as expected, so I edited my channel map to match my controller. Now it all looks good. In the modes tab, I set up the switches for arming, flight mode, beeper, and flip over after crash. I set air mode to be on the third position of my arm switch. I thought I was ready to fly until I noticed a few issues. The motor wires seemed a little bit long, so I gently secured them down with zip ties. Also, the wires coming from the camera could potentially cause some problems, so I fastened those to the bottom plate. The last modification I made was to add some heat shrink tubing around the receiver antenna and zip tie it in place. Now it's good to go. My first impression was that it flies exceptionally well. It responds smoothly to my stick inputs and is very easy to control. The three and a half inch form factor gives me confidence to comfortably fly through smaller gaps while also having a similar feeling to flying a five inch quad. Emacs is known for its well-tuned quads, but I really can't say enough good things about how the Baby Hawk 2 flies. It doesn't feel too light, yet it's heavy enough to maintain its momentum while doing freestyle tricks. I anticipated seeing a bit of prop wash while descending through my poorly executed power loops. But as you can see here, I've barely noticed anything. This is my favorite bind and fly quad that I've experienced yet. Seriously, I think the Baby Hawk 2 is the Goldilocks quad. It's not too big, it's not too small, 
it's just right. And I'm not saying that because Kelly slipped me some cash under the table. It's definitely not all positive. I do have some minor complaints besides the cable management issue that I mentioned earlier. For example, the strap is much too long. In order to tightly secure the battery, the resulting length of overhang from the strap could very easily get caught in the props. Before every flight, I am always, as Cornell from Emacs would say, fiddling a strap. But once the strap has been thoroughly fiddled, I can spin up and take off with peace of mind. When I fly, I generally like to record onboard high quality video. Despite its size, the Baby Hawk 2 can actually carry a GoPro. I use the GoPro Session 5, which by itself is around 73 grams, resulting in an all up weight of about 312 grams, including the mounting hardware. But it's too heavy! It's actually not too heavy, especially when flying more cinematically. The Baby Hawk 2 comes with a couple of PID profiles. The default is Profile 1. I'm going to switch to the second PID profile, which is meant for flying with heavier action cameras. With the GoPro mounted, the Baby Hawk 2 requires a little bit more throttle. However, it doesn't feel weighted down or difficult to control. When I flip and roll at a medium speed, it's perfectly fine. But when doing more aggressive maneuvers, the extra mass of the attached GoPro does become noticeable. I don't really see this as a problem because when I have a GoPro on board, my intention is to record smooth HD video with an occasional freestyle maneuver here or there. Hey, if you aren't already a subscriber to Ready, Set, Drone, you should be because we do lots of cool stuff with drones, camera drones, FPV, you name it, we have fun. Let's talk about durability. Over the past few weeks, I've been flying the Baby Hawk 2 pretty carefully, trying to avoid damaging it. I have had a couple of minor bumps, but no real crashes. So I decided to do some more aggressive flying, such as low altitude flips and rolls. And I ended up hitting a tree, disarming and falling to the ground. The quad and all of its propellers are undamaged. However, the plastic buckle on the battery strap completely snapped as the battery ejected. So it looks like I'll be using yet another zip tie. It seems like the battery strap is my biggest complaint so far with the Baby Hawk 2. Besides the excessive length and the weak plastic buckle, I noticed that the layer of rubbery material on the inside of the strap has peeled off which now means it won't grip my battery as well. The frame itself should be just as strong as the digital Baby Hawk 2, which Kelly put through its paces without any problem. When landing in damp grass, the all-in-one flight controller is protected by an insulating gasket from any stray droplets of water. Using the recommended 850 milliamp hour LiPo battery, I got some really impressive flight times. I noticed that my flight timer starts to blink after 10 minutes of flying. Since I don't need this warning, I turned it off in beta flight by going to the OSD tab and setting the timer 2 alarm to zero. When I have the GoPro attached and I place the battery where the strap is holding it securely, there is not much space to plug in the battery. I'm wondering if having the battery lead on the back of the Baby Hawk 2 would have been a better option. It is nice to have the cutouts for the strap on the frame. However, if I move the battery farther back to balance out the weight of the GoPro, the battery isn't as firmly situated. The Baby Hawk 2 is fairly quiet and a great choice for flying in a park without being obtrusive. Measuring the volume using the A-weighted scale and a slow response time, the Baby Hawk 2 reads at an average of 80 dBA. For comparison, the Hawk Pro is around 87 
and the Tiny Hawk 2 Freestyle comes in at about 75. In conclusion, if you like flying through small gaps, doing freestyle tricks, as well as having the option to mount an action camera to record high quality video, then the Baby Hawk 2 is the right quad for you. It's quiet, it's small, it's fun to fly, the positives far outweigh the negatives, and with a few zip ties, you can pretty much solve all the issues I was having. I highly recommend this. If you're interested in buying, check the description for affiliate links that will help out the channel at no extra cost to you. Thanks for watching, don't fly alone, and we'll see you next time on Ready, Set, Drone.